Hello and welcome to July. Uh, this month we're going to be discussing what it means when a man falls from the sky by Leslie Enka Arma and I listened to it. The version I listened to was narrated by Ajoya Andal. Before we dive into the book, I wanted to give you a brief update on me. My book of poetry, Scars That Never Bled, is progressing well. I just got the um, paperback proof copy and I am going to do some final edits and it is due to be released on August 9th. So diving into the book, What It Means When a Man Falls From the Sky is a collection of short stories and it is an amazing collection. When it first came out in, I believe, 2017, it was quite popular. It made a lot of um, awards, a lot of reading lists, and I did not read it at that time. I actually just heard of it just recently. So sometimes I am a few years behind on my reading, sometimes I'm a few decades behind on my reading, but I hope that I always will continue to find amazing stories like these. So as I said, I listened to it instead of reading it, and um, the narration was by Ajoya Ando. She has an amazing voice, and she won Audiobook of the Year for Tea Time with the Traditionally Built. Um, and I really like her range of voices. She has uh, many different dialects and many different uh, attitudes that she puts into the characters and she really manages to bring the stories to life. I had a little bit of trouble with listening to it because um, she also narrated The Power, which I listened to last year. and her narration of the power was so powerful that I kept going back to those characters while listening to this narration. So if I had listened to this one first, I don't think I would have had as much of a problem with that. But it did take me two or three stories to get the power out of my mind and actually dig into this book. Um, one thing that I really appreciated about her na narration is that it helps me hold the image of a black character in my mind. So a lot of the characters in this book are either Nigerian or Nigerian American and I noted on my blog the other day when reading Toni Morrison's Beloved that I noticed that when I get really empathetic with a character, when I'm feeling their pain, when I'm in the position of being part of them, I tend to think of them in my mind as white. And as a practice, recently I've been trying to read more um, stories by black creators and to hold the image of a black character in my mind while I experience empathy. Um, I think that's an important thing that we are able to do so that we can increase our empathy towards different people who are different than us, to hold someone who is different than us in our mind while feeling. So empathy. next I want to talk about the book as a collection because as I said it's not a novel, it's a collection of short stories. and. Usually when I read a collection of short stories, I think of each story on its own. I usually take a day or two between each story, and I like each, each story to stand on its own, and I don't take them as a whole. But this particular collection worked amazingly as a whole. Like, I don't think I've ever had a collection when I felt so much that it, its value was increased by each story's value was increased by the stories that surrounded it. So in the collection, the stories balance uh, contemporary realism with a surrealism. And for me that really, really hits on Slipstream because when each story starts, you don't know whether it's just going to be a contemporary or whether it's going to go off into the world of fantasy or sci-fantasy or what's going to happen. So it leaves 
the reader on the edge of their seats for is this going to have magic in it or is it going to be something about everyday life and I feel like that hits the feeling of slipstream that I really really love. Another thing I really liked in this collection of stories was the integration of the immigrant experience. So as a immigrant to Bulgaria I have tried to write immigrant stories and I can say that they are some of the most difficult stories that I've tried to write and this is because the story ends up too often becoming this preachy surface level tale of this is what it's like to be different in a different country but uh, in this collection of stories Leslie Emma very well um, shows immigrant life as part of a greater life. So it's there, it's on, it's like simmering below everything, driving a lot of the action, but at the same time the stories aren't immigrant tales. The stories are life tales that happen to happen to immigrants. Another thing that I liked was the generational layering. And this is something that you will get in magical realism or Afro surrealism, but you don't seem to see as often in uh, white American or white British uh, surrealism. And this is the layering of each generation on top of each other so that each action within each generation is inspired by the actions of the generation before and the generation after and it's it's a really powerful thing and it's one of the reasons that I really enjoy magical realism and afro surrealism because it has that generational layering more so than other types of slipstream okay so all that being said great book let's dive into the stories so the first story in the book is called the future looks good and it is probably one of the best stories with the generational layering that I was talking about. It tells the stories of three generations and everything that happened between couples and uh, parents and children and lovers breaking up and uh, wars and families being ripped apart. It tells all of this story in a single moment. The single moment of a girl fumbling with the keys to an apartment and it's just it's an amazing read and it was a great way to dive into these stories the next story I want to talk about is called light and it's the story of a father who doesn't want to let go of his daughter and have her grow up and have her light be extinguished and I really like it because it showcases the dangers and complexities of a long-distance relationship. A long-distance relationship between a couple, a long-distance relationship between mother and father, or mother and child, and father and child. And I suck at long-distance relationships. They are seriously one of the most difficult things in the world for and me. So it was something that I really related to and it kind of the way that she writes is not at all didactic. Like she's not telling you how to live your life. She's not telling you the dangers of what can happen. She's just laying out this story of what is. And so it's really powerful when an aspect of these stories relates to you because you, you feel it as this type of truth so in you. The next one I want to talk about is Windfalls. And in Windfalls, there is a mother who takes her daughter all around the country um, doing various slips and falls on various properties in order to scam insurance companies and get money. And this story was super powerful. It was one of those ones that 
For me, it wasn't hard to read, but I could see it being difficult to read for other people. But it makes you question what you see as normal and what you accept as normal because this girl who grew up with her mother accepted her life as normal she accepted the abuse her mother put her through as something normal she accepted her sexual becoming as something normal and she presents it to the reader as something normal and it's not until she starts reading baby books about how you're supposed to care for a baby because she's pregnant that she realizes her mom never cared for her that way and that maybe her life isn't so normal maybe there's a different way and so I feel like that one was really really clever with the way that it presented how a life that is very difficult can be seen as something that's normal and acceptable until it can be shown as something that's abnormal. The final story in the book is called Redemption and it's the story of a young girl who was sexually abused by her youth pastor and when she tells her mother nobody believes her and so she has to live not only with the memory of the abuse but with all of the shame that she brings her family by making this accusation against this man. And in the very end, at the second to last paragraph, there is a line that sums up not only this story, but the whole book. And the line is, girls with fire in their bellies will be forced to drink from a well of correction till the flames die out. And I feel like this is definitely a common thread through the entire book this idea of girls growing up and being forced into different um, shapes of society. Yeah, I feel like this line just really ties everything together nicely and was the perfect way to end the book. Now I realize I skipped a couple of stories. <laughs> so, uh, one of the best stories in the book was Who Will Greet You at Home? And this story is absolutely fantastic um, surrealism. And it's about a golem child that's made out of the hair of many women. And just the world building in it is fantastic. And the magic um, system in it is wonderful and I love golem stories. I've written golem stories. Uh, there's something to be said about this uh, mother giving life to a figure um, that is very, it hits on my love of Frankenstein, it hits on my love of creation and power and so yeah that was definitely probably my favorite in the whole book. And then there is also the title story, What It Means When a Man Falls from the Sky. And it is all about this magical mathematical equation that allows people to understand the world going on around them and manipulate it in um, ways that they couldn't before this mathematical equation was discovered. And I really liked it because I feel like it catches that idea, that feeling that you have when you understand something, but you can't express what you understand. Like you look at something and you're like, oh yes, like that, I, I understand, I feel that. Um, but you can't necessarily say why, or you can't put into words the, the logic behind it. And I feel like this story really captured that sensation and it was a pleasure to read as well. Overall, the whole book was absolutely a pleasure to read. If you haven't read it yet, uh, go read it. Uh, and then tell me your favorite story in it and tell me what you got from it.